I want to get started. This is a show hosted by Steven Crowder. He's got uh, Gerald Morgan on the show. He used to have my boy Dave Landau, the guy who stood me up on the show yes. twice, but I still <laughs> like him. And uh, they recently added Brian Callen, Nick DiPaolo, Mr. Guns and Gear, and Jim Brewer into the mix of the people yeah. involved on this show. So star-studded conservative talk show. That basically, it's trying to be a morning radio show that's conservative. Very, it's very morning zoo. There's a lot of yes. those elements to it. There's a lot of those elements, which we'll get into. And I, I was debating how to go about this because right now, Stephen is in the news for a lot of different reasons. He left where he was with the Blaze, and then he had an offer from the Daily Wire, and he decided to go public with the contract stipulations. Talking right. about how if he gets kicked off YouTube, he loses this percentage of pay. If he gets kicked off this. And what's weird about that is that that wasn't necessarily a contract. That was just like an initial offer. They're like, hey, if you want to sign in for us $50 million for four years, and here's some of the fine print stuff, which is if he wanted to take that seriously, then you start to go back and forth on that. That's how yeah. contract negotiations work. But instead, Stephen Crowder just went right to the internet and said, look at this bullshit. They want to take money away from me if they're not making money on the show. And it's like, well, kind of makes sense, doesn't it? You could have talked yeah, to them I'm, about I'm it. I'm not a great negotiator, but I assume the first rule is not to publicly mock them for offering you $50 million. Right. Yeah. So I think he rubbed some people the wrong way. In fact, he didn't say it was the Daily Wire, but the Daily Wire came out and said, yeah, that was our contract. And here's why we do it that way. And it's, <laughs> it's just business. You know, that's kind of how that works. Also, he could have said no and counter offered, but I guess right. we're assholes. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. It wasn't like is that wasn't like they were in negotiations on here's the contract. It was like here's an offer if you want to join our network. Right. So um anyway, Dave Landau now has joined that network. Uh as well as uh, my boy Alex Stein is over there. That's so, right. So um th- I'm sorry, that's not the Daily Wire. That's the network that he left the Blaze, the Blaze. I, say. I get all these things confused. Got to keep track of all of this stuff. So I've been debating where to start because he's going through a messy divorce right now. And he just had had Dave Landau leave the show. And Dave Landau, in an interview with Michael Malice, came out and really exposed that uh, Stephen Crowder is not a fun guy to work for. He's got some rules. Yeah, go ahead. I I think he completely changed how you listen to that show. Because I don't think Stephen Crowder is a horrible broadcaster. No. But he just exposed everything about it that makes you listen to it differently. So you know what? I think that's where I want to start. I want to start with some of the things that Dave Landau said. I only have a few clips here from that interview. But Dave Landau, if you don't know, was on the Anthony Cumia show. That's where I came to know Dave. I uh, did a couple shows with him over there on Compound Media. And Dave then started doing these stints where he would fly to Austin. Or is it Dallas? I forget. Dallas, yeah. He'd fly to Dallas and he would do Louder with Crowder. And then he would do both shows. So he'd do a lot of Crowder in the morning and then remote in to Anthony's show. And uh, it didn't take long before he's just like uh, typing an email to Anthony. Hey, I got a job offer. I'm going to work for Louder with Crowder now. And it yeah. makes sense. I, I sent Dave a note when that happened because I was a fan of his on Anthony. I was sorry to see him go. But it made sense. I mean, Crowder isn't behind a paywall. It was 5 million subscribers on YouTube at the time. And Dave Landau is a stand-up comic. He wants to build an audience and sell tickets, and he was. It worked really well. He was did very well yeah, for himself. Sure it, seemed, it, it must have seemed beautiful, like a beautiful opportunity, because that is like when I'll see um, Crowder's view numbers on. Uh, like I've been on um, Royce's show, Day Wave on Rumble. Yeah, and he'll just pop in sometimes and be like, "Yeah, right now, uh, 180 thousand people are watching Crowder," and I'm yeah. like, "What the fuck is going on?" That's why when I talk about Misery Loves Company. And Chuli Network and Sit Down Zumok, and I, I say that they're playing show business. They're like, whoa, this guy's got 400 live viewers. You're like, hey, did you know that there's people with 100,000 live viewers? <laughs> did you know that? Yeah, it's become show television. business. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what show business is, just so you guys know. I mean, it's not, listen, it's not easy to get to 400 live viewers. I'm not knocking it. It's hard to You're do, starting me. from scratch. <laughs> You know, if you weren't part of, like, say, the Howard Stern show to begin with, or, like, the Opie and Anthony show to begin with, and you get up to that point, not easy to do. But anyway, that's that I'm, I'm regressing, digressing, I'm doing all the gressing over here. I need to get ungressed. 
<laughs> get back on Please. with the point because there's so much to talk about. Nuggets. That's going to distract me. <laughs> All right. Thank you. So here we go. Um, we're going to talk about first. Dave talks about how we started getting censored on the show. Now, Dave's supposed to be the comic relief on the show. And yeah. Dave will tell you he's not like a super political guy, even though he's been with Steven Crowder and uh, and Anthony Cumia, and now he's signing with the Blaze. You think like, oh, it must be this conservative guy. Dave doesn't really care about politics all that much. Right. And and so he's just there to like crack wise and be the comic relief. And one of the first things he tells Michael Malice is he wasn't allowed to make jokes about cum or ejaculating. It's like, huh, Okay. So I guess like they're, you know, conservative values or something. Which is inter- it's interesting to replace that with Nick DiPaolo, of all people. I was thinking the same thing, because I-, I love Nick DiPaolo, but dude, <laughs> so you think he's going to hold back? I mean, I guess he no. will if he's told to, but... Just I, seemed- kind of. You, I, so, I, I don't want to interrupt you, but like I watched a couple episodes of Nick DiPaolo, and it seems like he's already cracking under these be clean restrictions that Crowder's giving him. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's start there because I think that's going to probably – we'll watch all of these clips with a different perspective once we know kind of how Crowder does business and how he's talking to the people who are on his show with him. And listen, Crowder's name is in the title. He can do whatever he wants. It's his show. Sure. He can run it however he wants. But thank goodness that there was no NDA and that Dave Landau could expose him <laughs> for uh, the way he runs said show. And the first clip I want to play for you is Dave talking about the rant button. This is bizarre. (laughs) And then, you know, it it became a little weird because a light was put in where it was his rant button. And it was basically a Dave don't talk button. Wait, so there's (laughs) literally a light bulb? What color was the light bulb? There was four lights in a row. <laughs> there were three it... lights. <laughs> <laughs> Michael gets a little bit too. I don't know if he's autistic or something. I like Michael Bellis, but in this interview, he gets into the deep, like into the weeds a little bit. You're like, okay, whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Boy, there were four lights or three. Yeah. The, that's not the point. What color? <laughs> yeah, well, that's, just, that's not the point at all. Serious. And when it was hit, I wasn't supposed to talk. And they you said, really, you know, was it like a regular colored light bulb? Or was it like red? <laughs> Uh, it was like a a, a yellow, uh, okay. a pretty bright yellow, like a, okay. a you know, like yield. So it's like off camera, <laughs> but in your eye, the eyesight. Yes, and I, I was. Would he be the one pressing the button, or was there a producer pressing the button? He would press it. So, like under, like Mr. Burns, like he had a button under his desk or, or, or the table, and when it's Stephen's turn to talk and Dave needs to shut the f up, he presses this button. Yes. So that's hysterical because immediately I thought of Vinny. <laughs> I was like, I could really use <laughs> one of those lights for the creep off. I, I like the picture that it's like a neon sign with like, that, like the <laughs> caution circle with Dave's face in it. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wish it was a draw that was just shut the fuck up, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. My bad. By the way, speaking of uh, Vinny and the creep off, we did a scum stream today. It's up on YouTube. We're making it available to anyone. It's not behind the paywall. Brian Johnson, the great Brian Johnson, was on with us, and it was one of the funnier episodes. If you're into that sort of thing, we had a blast. So that's worth uh, worth checking out. All right, Vinny, you happy? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you got it in so early, too. I know, I know. Vinny didn't make me do that. So this is Dave's reaction. <laughs> To said rant button or the Dave shut up button, as Dave refers to it. I was pissed a bit because I know my job. I I know that he talks a lot. I know that he's the star of the show. I know when to throw him what he needs to be thrown. I know when to sit back. It's what I did with Anthony for years. It's what I did next to Artie. It's what I, I, it's what I do. I'm not trying to ever steamroll him. Right. It, it, it was just, hey, don't be, don't be funnier, don't be, and, and it's that's the truth. I mean, it sounds bitter, but I knew it was true because I was pulled aside and I said, and it was, hey, make sure if you're doing a rant or like you guys are riffing, he gets the last word. You were t- so this is crazy that he's being instructed that Crowder has to have the last joke. Well, it's not just that, Carl. I, I don't know if you have this clip or not, but my favorite thing in the whole thing is that it's all rehearsed. 
Yeah, they do. Like, a it's dress it's rehearsal. like they're putting on they're putting on a play basically in order to make Steven seem like the funny guy. That's yeah. the craziest part of all of this is that Dave's like a naturally funny, like pepper in jokes. And they literally, in order to make Steven funny, they have to install a light <laughs> to be like, hey, he's the funny guy. Calm down. Yeah. And so Crowder, because of his ego or insecurity or something, instructed other people that when he gets the last laugh, no one else is allowed to tag it. And Dave even said, he goes, you know, as a comedian, if I had a funnier thing to say, I'd like to say that, but my job was not to be a comedian on this show. I wasn't allowed to say the yeah. funniest joke. And it was actually, it's like one of, one of the few smart things Opie has ever said in his career is that when you have, you know, Patrice O'Neill in and Bill Burr and Colin Quinn and these guys are all being funny, the credit still goes to, hey, the Opie and Anthony show was hilarious today. So if Dave Landau is being funny on that show, people still say, hey, Louder with Crowder was awesome today. Isn't it funny? That we have so little respect for Opie at this point. They were like, at least Opie knew that people were being funny on a show not to shut them up. Like, well, yeah, I mean, that's the <laughs> that, least you that can do. That was his great talent. That's <laughs> literally, letting other people talk. That's literally the easiest thing to do is to <laughs> shut the fuck up and let funny people be funny. I just, shut up, Chris. <laughs> Chris and I have these conversations all the time. I'm like, you, when you have a really funny quip, can you do it in your Carl impression? <laughs> just to fool people. <laughs> but I just got a high score on Candy Crush. <laughs> <laughs> all right so this is the last clip i have from this thing and I, we could pepper in more information because i've watched this and i've watched landau with uh, kumia since then so yeah. there's a lot of information here but this was kind of the final straw for dave not uh re-signing with louder with crowder and my phone rings and you know i, I don't want to go greatly into the conversation between us but it was uh, it, he's like do you want to do you still want to be on louder with crowder and I said, not at the moment. And uh, he starts going off on me. And now there's a ton of people in my apartment who can hear it. Wait, he's, like, he's literally raising his voice? He's screaming at me. Okay, so literally raising his voice, not just being stern. Like to the point where people, it's audible. Uh, it's audible, yeah. <laughs> yes, okay. Yeah, it's, it's uh, started stern, screaming, but then it said. got screaming. into telling me that he owns me. And, and in those words? Of... Yes. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He owns me, and and once no, you say, it must have been on clearance. I mean, no one. I, I was on sale, <laughs> baby. Neither of us can even reach the top shelf, let alone no. sit on it. No, because no, they're both it's, short. It's, it... <laughs> I was in a basket with a bunch of balls. He, he, uh... <laughs> I was in a looted Walmart. <laughs> yeah, he. Uh... It, it was just. It was. A, it was venomous, and. I don't know what he was going through at that point. And I just was like, dude, I, this is, it was all this projection coming at me. Wait, and let's I knew. slow down. All right. So you can see that Dave, he's laying it out there, but he's also saying, I don't know what he was going through. Now I should mention for Steven Crowder's in his defense, he had a horrible disease that almost killed him. I think last year, right? Like his, his rib cage was closing in on, the rest of his body and he had a collapsed lung and it was going to crush his heart. And he had to have this crazy surgery to like pop his rib cage out. It's like this weird thing. So that probably sucked. And oh, uh, is that what that was? Cause it, it, people were telling me that was elective and that's why he missed like the birth of his child or something. Oh, but I didn't realize it was like a serious thing. Yeah. The twins were born, but uh, no, I, that was not elective. That, that was oh, okay. going to kill him. <laughs> so, so that was pretty brutal. And I was going through a thing with his wife getting a divorce and he's very upset that uh, his wife, but before we get to that though, the fact that he told Landau that he owns Dave Landau, like that's not a good way to treat subordinates. Even if Dave's like, okay, you're right. I'll sign a contract. It wouldn't be a good relationship. Even if healthy. you have a slave, you don't remind them. You know? <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Like, ah, you, damn it's just it, not that's cool. Right. He does own me. Fuck. You're here because you <laughs> want to be, right? Yeah, yeah. That's it. <laughs> How do you not realize you sound like a cartoon villain when you're screaming that? I know. I own you. <laughs> right. <Mwah. laughs> yeah, is he twisting his mustache? Yeah. And it is true that Dave got more famous from being on Louder with Crowder, but Dave already had a career before that. He was already on Comedy Central. He was already on with Anthony Cumia. Like, and, and he was on with Artie, too. So it's not like a Crowder's just like, I found you out of nowhere. It's like, no, you saw me on the other show that you right. enjoyed. You asked me to come on your show. It's not... Thank you, though. I appreciate it. 
All right. And it's also not like that doesn't create a fun atmosphere. Like if Dave's no. supposed to be peppering in jokes, you don't want to do it with a guy that is secretly owning you <laughs> fucking behind the scenes. Right. Right. It's it's not conducive to a healthy work environment. And Mike, if you ever fucking interrupt me again, I swear to Christ. Well, the light doesn't oh, work. Sorry, but... sir. <laughs> the light doesn't work on Mike. That's the problem. Yeah, my seat vibrates when I'm not supposed to talk. <laughs> <laughs> the tildo goes in and out. Oh, <laughs> so if you ever hear, whoa. <laughs> That's not it, it's Mike. not Balin. To Carl's about down. to rant. <laughs> um, speaking of rants, I want to bring on a guy who has actually worked with Steven Crowder. And uh, he has some experience with that. Of course, he also worked with Dennis Miller. You know him as Christian Blatt. I know him as Christian Blatt. What's up, Christian Blatt? Uh, happy to be here. Thank you, Carl. And uh, nice to see everyone again. And uh, Blind Mike, it's uh, nice to meet you. I uh, I checked out your uh, Dennis Miller episode of Why Are You Laughing? And, oh, how did uh, I do? Did I miss anything? It, 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 it was decent. It would have been a lot better if you'd reached out to the guy who's practically Dennis Miller's biographer, but that's all right. I, I think <laughs> you did so pretty sorry. good. But when you do part two, I'll reach out to you. But uh, you did also do an episode on the most important moment of comedy in the 21st century, which, of course, is already lying on the Joe Buck show. And I love yes. that one, too. Yes. Yeah, that was a masterpiece. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Joe. <laughs> that's not a, not a good guess to get. Was that his first episode ever, too? Yes. That yeah. was the pilot. It was one of like four that he did yeah. all the time, I think. Yeah, yeah, not the right guy to bring on for your pilot. Um, so, Christian, you're coming off a very successful appearance on the Dick Show that I checked yes. out this week, um, which was which was great. I'm glad that you and Dick are going to go start going to Dodgers games together and eating <laughs> yeah, ice yeah. cream together. On the episode, Dick, <laughs> Dick uh, maps out this plan that uh, we should drop uh, three quarters of a tab of acid and then go to a Dodger game. So uh, Yeah, I heard that. So and I've I've yeah. done acid with Dick and gone to baseball before. <laughs> three quarters. This sounds like. Uh, wait, did he say three quarters or three tenths? I think he said three tenths. You know, I think he said three tenths. You know, yeah. And I was yeah, thinking yeah, about yeah. that, like thirty percent of a tab. Of, like, who's even measuring this? I don't even have the right <laughs> tools to figure this out. I mean, if I get overdosed, like, fine. You know, we just I, round I, up I to figure, one. I, yeah, I figure if Dick hands it to me, it's going to be safe. So I'm not <laughs> worried at all. Yeah, right. You can trust any drugs he hands you. He's a responsible guy. <laughs> I like that Carl said that like it was a rite of passage. Like, listen, as we all have done, I've done yeah. acid and gone to a Dodgers game with yeah, Dick. Of course. Of course. Right. <laughs> acid and baseball. It was a White Sox game, but yes, it was still uh, an important part of learning the ropes. So, Christian, real quick, can you just give some background on your experience working with Steven Crowder? Yeah, uh, I'll, uh, I'll try to breeze through it as quickly as I can. Uh, I first got to know... Steven Crowder, and I will uh, preface all of this one on one. He was always very nice to me, uh, you know, uh, mostly because I was helping him early in his career get on Dennis Miller's radio show. He didn't tell so you that he owned about... you at any point. N no, he okay. he did not. Uh, but the, he did actually turn on a light a lot of the times, and I wasn't <laughs> sure what I was supposed to be doing, so I just sat there. And, so I figured I should and... talk more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Silly me, I thought that uh, it was a uh, time to talk light. But uh, I got to know him through uh, Andrew Breitbart, who was uh, a good friend of mine. And uh, people people think of him in a very different way because of the website that still has his name. But uh, Stephen was writing for his website. And uh, uh, Andrew was like one of our regular guest hosts. And he was like, oh, you should have this guy Stephen Crowder on. So uh, and, and I mentioned this on The Dick Show, but I think it's funny. I checked through my notes. The first time we had him on was June 18th, 2009. Steven Crowder was on an hour three and then listed an hour two as comedian Joe Rogan. Uh, you know, the guy <laughs> yeah. from news radio, that yeah. guy. So uh, oh, I've but, heard of him. Fear factor, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 I've, I've heard of yeah. Joe Rogan. So, yeah. So two guys on the show who had you know, millions upon millions of dollars dumped on them in the years since mm -hmm. and me trying to, <laughs> trying to help out their careers. But now you're making uh, me look so, bad, Christian. I, all right, coming up on next on the show, Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So uh, it got so that, uh, you know, we would have him on probably about once a month, Stephen. And he was a columnist for Fox News. And one of those columns I would like to read a passage from at some point. It doesn't have to be now. Yes, uh, I have a video that we're going to lead into that. So perfect. Yeah. yeah, there's a video that directly ties into that. So he, you know, he would be on about once a month. And, you know, Dennis never got in the way of guest bookings. You know, there's like one person ever he told me not to have on that I'll unfortunately take to my grave. But, you know, he liked Steve and he thought he was funny. And, uh, you know, so we would have him on about once a month. And someone in the company 
who shall remain nameless, said to me, hey, the next time that uh, Stephen Crowder's turn comes up, uh, how about you do an hour of phone calls instead? And oh, I'm like, oh, that's not okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> that's that's how the suits feel. So they, they held up a no talking. <laughs> Rando yeah. sounds pretty good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they held up a light, and it was a no Stephen talking for yeah. two more months. <laughs> like, Oof. And, uh it's a bright so, light. We learned it. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, we'd still have him on once in a while. And, uh, you know, we kept in touch. And I ended up booking guests for him for Louder with Crowder. I was working for a, a network called CRTV that eventually merged with The Blaze. I had a disastrous stint with a gentleman named Mark Stein. But uh, then Crowder was like, oh, come help us out and book guests. And uh, because I was, you know, which you didn't get into in the Landau thing, I was not willing to move my family to Texas. So uh, let's just book guests remotely from Los Angeles. Right. And I did it for two months. And I will admit I did a very poor job, not from lack of trying. Yeah. I, had, I booked two guests in two months. The first was Artie Lang. And I knew that this wasn't a good fit when uh, <laughs> I mentioned to Stephen that I had booked him. And his response was, what am I going to talk to Artie Lang about? And yeah, I was like, what a boring I mean, Jesus guest. Christ, <laughs> and, like everything, you know, yeah. like just get him to tell the pig story for the 15th yeah, time. Right. I mean, you really like, so, you know, so we had him on and then Dennis did me a favor and he came on too and uh, was very nervous about his appearance on that show because uh, Steven used a, uh, a slur for transsexual people that uh, was a lot more common in 2017. But even in 2017, Dennis is like, I don't want to be part of any conversation that uh, could be bad for my career. You know, I just you know? had a funny idea in post. If I just bleep out the word that he just used, and, uh, we, we, and then we all go, whoa, whoa, Christian, whoa. What Jesus the fuck? Uh, I'm not, we're having know. technical difficulties. <laughs> You're like, that's, that's not such a bad word. It's in Jim Norton's phone 20 times. You know, I don't think that there's any problem with that. But uh, so he's a, he's a little nervous about that. But uh, I, uh, I listened to the appearance. And my favorite part about working on that show is that I did not get a comp subscription to Louder with Crowder. I had to borrow a login from a friend of mine who I knew actually spent money for it because I had to check it out. They, they would not give me a comp. That's funny. So uh, I had to listen back to it. And I'm like, yeah, it was all right, but I know it. And uh, the thing about Steven is his dad is like his his enforcer, his consigliere, and like at the same time is like number one cheerleader. So his dad like handles everything. And you talk to his dad. So his dad was the one who eventually, you know, was like, oh, yeah, yeah, it didn't work out. And I'm like, yeah, look, I get it. I'm sorry that I wasn't able to book more guests for you. But by the way, it was really hard to book guests for him because he wasn't as big as he is now. Right. But still, people knew like, oh, yeah, the guy that I, I saw a video of him getting punched in the face. Right. So. You know, he would. I would try and get everybody that he wanted, which was all the way up to Sylvester Stallone. But when Penn Jillette is passing, you know that. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay, yeah. Maybe not. Is... Maybe not all the A-list celebrities are lining up for this one. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. So uh, you know, and uh, so I like to say that I booked two and a half guests on this show because uh, Bo Derek was a friend of Dennis's, and she said she'd come on, but then I got let go, so I never actually booked her on the show. But Bo I could have had could have been is Bo Derek conservative? <laughs> yes, I didn't know. Uh, yes, that. she is. Okay, yeah. Um, or you know what? She's uh, she's conservative for the rights of animals. Maybe I shouldn't uh, cast a light on somebody that. Oh <laughs> doesn't yeah, want I, it, I, I have no idea. I mean, conservative in Hollywood could just mean like. I don't know. You don't want to give a hundred percent of your money to the government. You know, I, right. I just yeah, want to keep like, it, some of it. If, if that's yeah, cool. And, uh, when I was talking about this the other day, it's like Dennis lives up in Montecito. Anybody who's been to Montecito is like, I would like to keep all this money as well. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to go. I don't want to go pay for those schlubs who live in Burbank, like Christian Blatt. You know, <laughs> I, I don't want to waste my money on them. And uh, so, like, sort of, that was basically the end of my time there. And uh, every once in a while, I would hear from Stephen's dad. And 100% of the time when I heard from Stephen's dad, it was because he wanted something. Okay. And one of the time, the last time I talked to him, he uh, wanted to see if uh, Dennis would have an interest in doing something that they were calling a shout out, which is basically like a cameo, but it was for conservative people. So imagine a platform where you're recording videos for fans, but every single one of them is like that Brett Favre one where it had all the coded language uh. that he didn't understand. <laughs> so they're all look basically like that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't even bring it to Dennis because I'm like, no, he doesn't, he doesn't want to, you know, record videos for $50 a pop. You know, this isn't something he's interested in. I'm too good and, for uh, that. I wouldn't do that because I know what, that it will get me to say crazy shit that'd be goofed what, on for later. 
But Carl, what about fifty-one dollars? All right. Mm-hmm. And what's my what's my cut out of this fifty-one? <laughs> Uh, and, uh, there was, yeah, there was one other time where like Dennis was doing a show in Dallas and I, I just, I asked Steven's dad, I'm like, Oh, you, do you have any interest in having him come to the studio? This was an email. I get a call from him and I was berated about how Dennis was so disrespectful when he was on the show. Oh. Uh, this was the other moment where I knew I wasn't going to be working there for very long. Uh, Dennis said on the show, I'm just doing this as a favor to Christian. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm like, all right. But it was Tolerance. like, Steven's dad just would not. You know, you could kind of when we get to the video you're about to talk about, you can kind of see some things that run in the family. Steven's dad was not giving in and he well, was just like Hold on a second. I think just, that the totally the opposite way, I'm like kudos to Christian who got Dennis Miller, who would never come on this show in a million years. Correct. But they're so tight, <laughs> he's like, Fine, I'll do it. Like I would have been like, Hey, thanks for getting us Dennis Miller. That's amazing. Thanks, buddy. I would have taken yeah. it very differently. Well, he he didn't, and you know, he, <laughs> right. it was basically like it was like a bad breakup call where like Steven's dad is just, you know, he's just going on. And I'm like, I actually said to him, like, okay, I get it. You don't want him on the show. I actually, you know, I use that tone. And then he like backed it, backed off a little bit and he talked, but that was the last time I think I talked to him until he asked, you know, Dennis to film videos and charge people for them. So, you know, I didn't have a close relationship with him uh, at all. I just, you know, had enough of an understanding of the way things worked there that uh, when I heard Dave Landau and Michael Malice, I was like, oh, yeah, this this all literally adds up to, uh, you know, the limited understanding that I had. And, uh, you know, going back to like when I first knew who he was, there were a lot of people who were turned off by him, who I also won't name, but he started billing himself as a comedian. Right. And there's guys who were like, hosts of shows that are like i don't even call myself a comedian how does this kid get off saying that he's a comedian especially when he's you know moderately amusing so you know that that really led into the problem with booking guests that you thought you might have been able to get for him you're like oh i i can't get bill schultz okay that's a joke i didn't actually try to get bill schultz but i don't know that he would have said yes yeah but he wasn't busy that's for sure (laughs) he had time if he needed to i'm just kidding i have no problem with bill schultz i love bill schultz it's just a joke he's fine all right so this is going to lead me to what i want to play for you next and normally i am not a fan i mean not normally all the time i'm not a fan of people being filmed and in a private situation and then that being released to the public i think it's a shitty thing that happens now, in this case, the reason why I'm going to play it is because it's out there. Everyone's seen it already. And it really does add to who Steven Crowder is, which kind of helps us understand how the show runs and how people respond to him and everything else. So what's happening right now is his wife's filed for divorce. And Steven Crowder is one of these like Christian guys who is so proud of himself. And, and this is going to lead into what uh, Christian brought. But... Crowder's so proud of himself for like saving themselves for marriage and doing everything the, the Christian way and all this stuff and talking about how, um, you know, his wife doesn't have a job. She's just there to do wifely things and wifely duties, which, you know, very <laughs> traditional conservative. And then here is uh, from their ring footage of the two of them in the backyard. For some reason, they only have one car. I think that's a it control doesn't make thing. any sense. No, it's I think a fucking it's, it's billion hundred. <laughs> yeah, that's a hundred percent a power move. That's a I control mean, there's, no, there's no re- like you know, my, my wife is a successful TV writer. We make a fraction of what Steven Crowder is, and we have two cars. Whoa! So yeah, it's yeah, whoa, thank whoa, you. Whoa, whoa. I, don't I didn't know, know we were all hey. taking our dicks out. Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, one of them, one of them is a nineteen ninety eight and it has a tape deck. <laughs> Jealous? <laughs> yeah, now you're now you're lying. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll take a picture later. And I'll show you. <laughs> Are you really have a '98? It's a 1998 Lexus with a tape deck and a five CD changer. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. But Stephen Crowder's wife is very jealous. I wish you were accepting I mean, super chats. She could have right gone to pick up his grilling supplies if only she'd had a '98 Lexus. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit, we'd be getting so many sympathy uh, super chats if I allowed that on this show. All right. So without further ado, this is the. Ring cam footage of the two of them having a uh, squabble. I drew a boundary. I drew a boundary. All right, so I should point out, uh, very nice looking backyard. They're on the back, in the furniture in the backyard. Uh, The wife is, I think, eight months pregnant with twins at this point, barefoot and sweatpants. And she wants to, she needs to run some errands or something. And she needs to use the car and. Crowder ain't having it. No, no, you just did, you just did it. I drew a boundary of abuse and control. You were not taking the car. Because 
if you refuse to do white food things, then I will go pick up the groceries. American groceries. I'd be happy. Steaks, wood pellets, my grill. I know it's not a reasonable request, but I'll go do it. How about you first? Hillary, how do you respect the man? Yes, I do the man. I do the man. You see the love of that. No, no. I don't mean to make it. No, you're not taking the cup. Steven, you're not taking the cup. Steven, you are not then I will the ask them to pick me up. Would you like me to ask? Oh, that's right. It's not for that, Steven. She goes, oh, well, then I'll ask my friends to come pick me up if I can't use the car. And he goes, is that a threat? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> the fuck is going on here? You know how I feel about people who are able to make friends, Hillary. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? That is so weird. Give it an Uber. It, it, it's a very controlling. Okay, Stephen. Well, you know, what I think is going on there is that he doesn't want to be exposed as being this controlling asshole. So she's like, I'll get my friends to come pick me up. It's like, who are you going to talk about? The fact that I wouldn't let you use the car, you know? <laughs> right, right. Well, you have to say that our car is broken down and I <laughs> yeah, won't buy right. another one for some reason. <laughs> I can't. Do, feeling some constraints? Steven. Like, I can't Steven. go. I, listen to me. Listen to me. You want to walk out right now? Listen to me. I can't go to the gym. I can't go to my parents. I can't call my friends. I can't go. I can't be home. You're going to take the car and leave me here. Hillary, just think of it. He's 14 years old. Like, like, listen to the things he's like. <laughs> I can't yeah. play ball with the fellas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can't see my parents. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, right. I'll get it. I'll be back when I'm back. <laughs> no, that doesn't work either. You'll be back when you're back. That doesn't work either. <laughs> I, That's I my favorite part of the video, by the way. Yeah, is that he's simultaneously holding up uh, traditional gender roles and going, "That doesn't work either." I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's <laughs> being a child. Yeah. Being set to the second and you going back So th that part right there is annoying to me because I'm a busy guy too. But he goes, "Do you understand the difference? I, Do you understand the difference between my life being set to the second and you going back back?" My life being set to the second. He's so busy. He can't possibly not have his car for the 25 minutes he has to go run her errand or whatever. And to that, I just say, you're doing it wrong. If you're that <laughs> fucking busy, like, that's not what success looks like. You got you need to be able to have some downtime and enjoy your life. Yeah, bitching your also, wife from the office. Also, ignore the fact the that office. I'm smoking a cigar in my comfy <laughs> socks. Yeah, I know. He's, very, he's just lounging in yeah, the back. He's not selling it. <laughs> Don't you see at how busy I am? He was a kid, he read a book. At some point when he was a kid, he read a book on what it means to be a guy, and he's like, all yes. right, uh, cigar, comfy socks, grilling supplies, yelling at my wife. I think I can handle all of those and, things. Uh, I Keep actually, your bitch in line. This right. reminds me. This That's reminds the title me. of the book, Mike. <laughs> Is that one of the books they ban in Florida? This reminds me <laughs> of what Dave Landau was talking about. There's a lot of things that we didn't get to in there, his complaints about it, but one of them was he had to show up at work at 7 a.m., and work until yeah. three every day. It was like an eight-hour shift. And so when the show's on the air, he has to be writing bits and coming up with things for the show. And it's like, well, if I just, I'm going to work fucking 40 hours, seven to three every day, I'll just get a real job like a, you know, a schlub. I'm in show business. Yeah. What, what are we doing? Be, be able to tell my own jokes. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Because he had to work on Fridays, <laughs> which fucks him up for tour touring. So I guess that this, you know, crowd is probably a workaholic and he expects everyone else to... Put in the hours, I guess. <laughs> anyway, this goes on. I want to show the end, I think. I don't want to go through all of this. Um, there's a lot of I love you, I don't love you shit. This is weird. Yeah. Hillary, you're right, right in past. Become someone day in and day out worthy of a wife worth no not as a wife i didn't say the wife. wife hillary hillary come on now i'm not gonna engage i'm not gonna engage anymore i'm gonna go i'll get texts that you need i'll get you what you need i i love you i'm committed to you are you committed enough to do those things i'm, I'm not engaged. i'm not gonna are you committed I'm enough to do those things that. You're not committed to anything. You're not committed to anything. I should point out what he's saying, get the gloves. So 
She has to give the dog some medicine that she's allergic to or something. This, this is an eight-month pregnant woman. Well, she's worried <laughs> that it's toxic for her unborn children. Yeah. Like, you know, by the way, also Stephen Crowder's children inside of her, right. her womb. Yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah. He's like go so, get the fucking gloves he, on. And take why are you saying dogs. you're not committed to anything? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's insane. You just said I love you. I'm committed to you. Walk the dog's front and gloves. Walk the dog's front and gloves. Are you committed enough to be noticed? I... Are you committed enough to do anything? Are you committed enough to do anything? He should be committed. <laughs> Put on some gloves. Are you committed enough to get the medication? Don't you take, take that in. All right, it says now on the screen, uh, as the Crowders head inside, Stephen gets angrier and angrier, and by his own admission screams, I will fuck you up, at his pregnant wife, Hillary, who then flees their home. So uh, according to this video, and I should say I grabbed this video from Yashar's Substack. Is where I got that video from. Jesus. So I mean, um, when I don't get steak, I get grumpy. But you know. <laughs> yeah, right. I know he, he doesn't have his grill pellets. Yeah, what's, what's the guy supposed to do? Yeah. Order it. Hands are tied. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So with that, you found a very interesting article, Christian, when he used to write for yeah. Fox News. Yeah, I mean, part of the you know knowing him as long as I have is uh, I you just remember things like I remember the opinion pieces about how proud he was that he didn't masturbate, uh, about how offended he was by the original hot tub time machine, which, you know, look, it's not Citizen Kane, but it's certainly not offensive. <laughs> you know? So I, I kind of remember all those things. And uh, do you want me to share it on the screen so people can see it uh, for the visual audience or just read from it? If That's you know a- how, do you know how to share it on the screen? Yeah. I mean, I think you might have to approve me to share. But, all right. Uh, I, yeah, so uh, it's uh, it's right here. Oh, what did I just do? Oh, I just knocked myself out of my own show. Welcome to the producer Chris uh, hour. <laughs> uh, I guess it didn't. Anyway, I'll just read it because I'm hold getting on, distracted. Hold on, my bad, my bad. I, I hit the back button because I'm an idiot. <laughs> You're a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Isn't that so, so contagious? From it's impossible May not to 11th. do that. <laughs> May 11th, 2015, and you might not want to take such a strong stand on issues just in general in life. And this piece is called, I'm a guy, and I'll never badmouth my wife. (laughs) Except Uh, for to her face. Oh, no. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. There is a lot of it. I'd say every word of this is worth reading, but uh, the most important part is uh, where he writes, firstly... There may be some people out there who actually believe their wife to merely be the, quote, old ball and chain, unquote. To you, I say, you are a loser. Not only are you a loser for dishonoring the woman who is now an extension of yourself, but you're a loser for picking someone who you hate having to come home to every night. What kind of an idiot are you to marry a person that you think is an absolute moron? The same people are shocked. When I don't chime in on their urinate and moan fest regarding their old maids, imagine that. Imagine actually thinking that I married somebody better than myself. And it goes on, but I think. Well, that, in Crowder's uh, defense, most women do suck. So he's making some good points there. You know, not everyone's going to end up with a, uh, a girl from the jingles department. As the, yeah, unfortunately, Carl, for you and I, we've found the only two that don't. Correct. You know, I think it's important to make sure I'm on the record saying that. Uh, <laughs> well, also, you know, Brian I, Mike's dealing with, uh, you know, his girlfriend's dealing with the police that he's calling to his house. Yes. So yeah, he's got a winner. He's calling them by accident. So, <laughs> so he's got a winner over there. <laughs> They're here right now. Is, <laughs> is, it by, is it by accident or do you, is there just the thrill for self-swatting, Mike? <laughs> I need I need help. She she won't let me take the car out, and I don't understand why. <laughs> he, put, he puts on girls' panties and swats himself. That's his thing. <laughs> so yeah, that's, uh, so that uh, that opinion piece is out there. It's still on FoxNews.com. Everyone can find it. It's I embarrassing. Had, uh, screen grabbed it just in case maybe it went away, but I don't think anybody at Fox is trying to cover for Stephen Crowder at this moment. Well, right. it, yeah. So it's it's embarrassing that he wrote that piece, and now he's in this very public feud with his wife and his response to that video being leaked by his wife, obviously he wanted to let people know how he treats her was him to then go out and talk about how mental she is, which is, I don't think a good tactic at that point. Like, don't be like, Oh, you think I'm an asshole. You're a bigger asshole. Like, okay. Well, you're both assholes. Okay. You win. 
I, guess. I mean, look, at some point in her life, she thought it was a good idea to marry Steven Crowder. So obviously she's something of an asshole. Yeah, she's not, she's not bright. All right. I, I, hear, I see what you're saying. All right. So with all of that, wow, that was some setup for the show. If you're just joining us, we're talking about Louder with Crowder. And um, I want to just uh, play a clip for you from today's episode, this morning's episode. This is how it starts oh. off. And uh, whew, get ready. For- Yeah. yeah, and 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 you know, Dave Landau was talking about things he couldn't say. So I guess uh, Stephen can say shit, uh, but uh, no one else can. By the way, Carl, that's really unfair. Clearly, you pulled a clip from their dress rehearsal today. You should have pulled a clip from the actual show. Maybe <laughs> yes. it was better on the actual show. <laughs> this is they the nailed actual it in the, during the matinee. Yeah, <laughs> this is the actual show. Oh, okay, <laughs> he didn't even pronounce my mistake. <laughs> he was supposed to say um, kung flu fighting, and he said kung fu fighting. He didn't even do it. I mean, take two on that one. And then none of the lyrics are funny. <laughs> like a parody song, you should have like some jokes in there or something. Just trying to make a political no, point. Well, well, actually, do you have my clip 10? Because that's also another parody song, and it's even less funny because it's literally just promoting the show. There's no point to it. I don't want to stream any shows other than what I've been trying to stream lately. All I have to use is Rumble Now and a full mug club. By the way, thank you, Carl. I can go a lifetime without hearing the words Mug Club again. Jesus Christ. <laughs> know, mug All this club. guy does is promote Mug Club. Mug yeah, Club. Mug Club. His, mug club. Uh, <laughs> now, I want to point out that because we were talking about all the different deals he had and companies he worked with, he did sign a deal with Rumble. So he's promoting yes. Rumble a lot. I didn't realize he was still on YouTube. So then I was like, I was asking Mike where to even find this stuff, and then I figured it out. And then on the YouTube video, what they'll do is they'll start talking about something that's a little too spicy for YouTube, and a thing will come yeah. up that says, you can't watch this on YouTube, go to Rumble. So they're like actively trying to piss off YouTube, which is fun. <laughs> I'm okay with that. So this is well, uh, so it's the same model as uh, Pornhub, or so I'm told. Yes. You know, it's like, if you want to see the good clip, <laughs> yeah, right. you actually have to pay. Is, yeah, oh, right. yes. There's yeah, no yeah, money yeah. shots here. <laughs> what I've been trying to stream lately. All I have to use is my mug club. Like, I guess the Samantha B thing counts as a joke, but there's no, like, jokes in it. No, there's not. They just change the words of a song, which is technically a parody, I suppose. But. So at the end of this Kung Flu fighting parody, this is, it t- turns into, and, and as you're seeing on the screen now, it's just constantly talking about... You can watch us on Rumble, and there's the Mug Club, and this is goes right into that. This goes on for so long, too. Join Mug Club today for $89 annually to support content like this and get access to the entire network. Louderwithcrowder.com slash Mug Club. Oh, thank you. <laughs> support content like this yeah. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> how do i how do i detract from content like how yeah, do i right. stop content like this is there a Where thumbs, do I donate? <laughs> is there a thumbs down button i could pay 89 dollars for because hey. that might be money worth I, I, I would give 89 dollars to samantha b just in response to what we just saw i think that uh she deserves it but now, yeah most of that clip it's not like the jokes aren't funny but there's so much of the ho 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 no yeah and i'm like well those aren't even jokes you're not even trying to fit the jokes in yeah and the chorus is kept repeating 
When you do a parody no. song, if you're going to do the whole song, like you got to like put jokes in the whole time. You can't just like repeat the chorus well, three times. Look, looks like Brian Callen doesn't come in on Fridays for eight hours. No, <laughs> I don't think he's coming in there. So I know I was wondering about that too, because they're not all on the show all the time. So he yeah. wanted Dave Landau to be there five days a week and it would have fucked up Dave Landau's comedy schedule and stuff. And it's like now with like Nick DiPaolo and Brian Callen and these guys, like they're not going to Jim Brewer. He's not going to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll just cancel my theater gigs for that week. I had to be on your rumble. Show. That would be it would be amazing if Nick DiPaolo was doing just desk work at 2 p.m. on a Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't get you imagine. This reminds me. It reminds me of when Stuttering John left the Howard Stern show. He said on air, he's like, you know who should take my job is Nick DiPaolo. And then Nick DiPaolo <laughs> called him and was just like, you think I want to be a phone screener? I'm a professional stand-up. What are you talking about? <laughs> All right, so now we just saw that maybe sometimes things at home for Steven Crowder aren't all fun and games. You might have noticed that. And uh, sure. so he's going to come on the show. And I feel like he's doing damage control. I feel like I'm actively watching a man doing damage control on his show because he's going to tell a story about how fun he's having at, at you know feeding his kids at home. I had a good morning. I uh, would, when feeding the little ones, I come up with new songs all the time. I didn't want to eat. How did this happen? Well, so I was saying, uh, I'm about to feed bananas to you, so get ready, get ready. <laughs> I think that? I may get some strawberries too, so get ready, get. I'm about to feed you, so here it comes. And how, then, how did that work? Well, one did not like it at all, and yeah. the other was just going like. Mm, but mm. didn't eat the. And it was just or mashed bananas, bananas everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you were saying morning zoo stuff, this reminds me of a local morning show. Especially the laughter. I'll never unhear Dave Landau's words when I hear laughter on this show. Yes. Because you know it's all rehearsed and scripted, and they've they've heard these bits already. So it's literally fake laughter. That's so Yeah, weird. there's all the fake laughter. The only thing that's missing is Cardiff with his bell. Yeah. <laughs> now we have it. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to introduce the guests for today. Remember, I pulled this from this morning's episode, and I couldn't have been more excited about this. It is good to be here, and I really can't wait to oh talk about God. the border, can't wait to talk about Tucker Carlson. But also, just a few hours ago, two drones crashed into the Kremlin residence of Vladimir Putin, almost killing him, and they're threatening to escalate to nuclear war as Ukraine launches a massive offensive and threatens to invade Russia itself. Well, I asked how you were doing, but that's... <laughs> yes. Well, that's how I'm doing. <laughs> I fucking love Alex Jones. You can't just have like uh, a normal conversation. This guy doesn't do small talk. Yeah. Alex Jones is like, no, I'm doing great. How are you doing? That's awesome. Yeah. The kids? Crowd, try controlling him. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's no way he's he's going to be up for our dress rehearsal. Yeah. Glad Alex that you can sing to your kids while the choose. lizard people are poisoning our strawberries. But, you know, you do you, Stephen. <laughs> All right. So I have um, one more clip that I want to play, and then I'll, I'll hand it over to Mike. Because I didn't realize that Alex Jones, he talks about how he does some bits and, and skits on his show, just like Crowder does. Not as much anymore, but God, I would love to see more of this. But as if my listeners, I mean, I don't do as many great skits as you do. I used to do a lot more of them. Uh, but when I would do skits, obviously when I'm dressed up like Cobra Commander, I'm not really the leader of Cobra. It doesn't exist. It's like reverse psychology, yeah. only instead of like, oh, ooh, the liver's gross, you were like, Meh, do LSD. Uh, exactly. Well, when Cobra Commander w would be like, I support Obama and what he's been doing. It's good to fund the radical Islamists and destabilize the planet. That's a pretty good Cobra Commander. So, yeah. And, and it's, it's obviously okay. I'm not Cobra Commander. What is going on here? I like his Cobra Commander. Yeah. I want to have it's Alex Jones on this show just as Cobra Commander the entire time <laughs> yeah. and never reveal well, kind of he, like how they had George Clooney play the dog on South Park and it's all he did was just bark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to do that with uh, Alex well, Jones. I, don't, I want to stay relevant, so uh, I suppose you're doing <laughs> yeah. good things over there. Yeah, just keep it. It shouldn't be too hard to get him to play Cobra Commander. He's already got the hood. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. Yeah, thanks. I, I was proud of it. I see what you did. <laughs> That's why I strong armed it in there. Get out of the way, Mike. <laughs> I'm coming through. <laughs> Mike Geary, what did you pick up on? Because you have a bunch of clips here from Louder with well, Crowder. Did you want to? I, I could start with stuff from uh, the day after that video we played came out where he's kind of in uh, damage control mode talking about his divorce. Actually, it's before that video came out. This is just uh, the report of his divorce. Okay, yeah, let's start um, there. Clips uh, 12, 13, and 14 I all found 
very interesting because this is him kind of positioning himself as, uh, like we said before, like a man's, a traditional man, you know? Right. Yep, yep, yep. Clear here. Uh, I have been living with a proverbial boot on my neck for going on years now. Uh, since He's the George Floyd of broadcasting, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was against it at the time, but I finally understand the Black Lives Matter movement. Yeah, this is not hyperbole, everyone. <laughs> it's 2021. I've been living through what has increasingly been a horrendous divorce. Now, let me say on the outset, to be clear, there is no infidelity, any kind of physical abuse at all on either side. And no, this was not uh, my choice my then wife decided that she didn't want to be married anymore. And in the state of Texas, that is completely permitted. It's been the most <laughs> heartbreaking experience of my life. That's such a weird he says thing that to say. several times that yeah. it's completely. Per He's like, listen, I, I don't make the laws, gang. If she wants to leave, they, I guess she's free to. What a crazy state. Well, yeah, which state? Yeah. Which state is the woman not allowed to get a divorce yeah. in? <laughs> I'm not well, talking I, know, to do some I know in some states you have to wait like a year to actually get divorced, but uh, I think that, yeah, his problem is like if a woman wants to get divorced, she's allowed to, and that should obviously only be the rule for the man. And, you know, I'm, Listen, I'm not going to Listen, I know what states the age of consent is 16, but I don't know which states the woman's not allowed to get a divorce. That sounds <laughs> sounds crazy hey, to Carl, me. Hey, Carl, what state does uh, Bailing Dupree live in? <laughs> West Virginia. Doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> what a great episode great last if, week. If, it would be great if you were friends with a woman and you were uh, just, uh, how's everything going in your marriage? And she's like, I'd love to get a divorce, but I'm not allowed. You know the laws. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, it's, it's 2023. It's 2023. What is your husband telling you? <laughs> All right. So then thir uh, I think 13 is like making sure, you know, obviously when we hear that clip, he's talking about his marriage breaking up and everything. And your guy's instinct was probably, oh, it was those fucking kids, wasn't it? It was those dirty rat kids. <laughs> But that's what I he's going to assure us it wasn't. Okay. Good, because that's exactly what I was thinking. Kids are always the problem. Those with meddling the kids. Always the kids. <laughs> One thing I want to be really clear about is certain. True North here is that my children are blameless. Completely without fault. And so oh. we decided to resolve these issues privately. As it's in their best interests. Uh, both emotionally and physically. To do so. Now, the other... Wait, the reason why he didn't bring this to the media was because of the children? We decided not to make this a whole uh, spectacle for the whole world to see because we have children. Yeah. No, you shouldn't anyway. It, it should be private. Have a child also, think about the privacy? Kids, like, eight months old or something? <laughs> yeah. We're going on our, our um, marriage dissolves privacy tour. Yeah. <laughs> Does it even make sense? But as if his audience would be like, oh, Steven, it was those dirty rats, wasn't it? We'll take care of them for you. <laughs> no, no, if no. Put your, your pitchforks down, everyone. <laughs> if only your wife hadn't handled those dog chemicals while she was still pregnant, maybe the kids would have turned out fine. But obviously we hate them now. <laughs> well, now you're just blaming Crowder again. I won't, I won't stand for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Uh, here's 14. Any setup for this? Um, I, well, it actually goes to... Maybe he had the, the blog that Christian read in mind, because it's kind of a defense of that point. That's funny. It's pretty simple. Um, I loved a woman so much that I married her. A woman who, despite all of this, I still love as the mother of my children. And she wanted something else for her life. That's not my choice. She simply wanted out, and the law says that that's how it works. Now, of course, look, I get it. There are multiple sides to every story, but one thing that is undeniable uh, in this case is that it's no one's fault but my own in that I picked wrong, and that's <laughs> certainly not the fault of my children. <laughs> it's, no one's, it's no one's fault. It's never mind because my wife sucks. Yeah. <laughs> that's some spin. Hey, the Kids, blame's it's not entirely daddy's on fault me that mommy's loving. such a cunt. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> She's been this way her whole life. I want to make sure everyone blames me because I loved this dumb bitch. So but again, <laughs> yes. it's me you should be blaming. <laughs> oh my god, that's hysterical. What's wrong with this guy? <laughs> All right. So um I want to go back to Alex Jones because, you know, he's one of my favorites. And uh they're talking about when Alex Jones was going through his divorce, and of course, they were bringing up in court that um, Alex says he plays a character 
when he's on his show. It's not the real right. Alex. And so Alex is saying, well, there are times when I'm playing a character. There are other times when I'm being very serious and I'm being myself. Sure. And uh, you all remember, I think we put it on this show when he talked about eating his neighbors. <laughs> so Alex is going to great setup for that. <laughs> Alex is going to explain that that was a joke. And what's great about this clip is that um, Crowder has to tag this and uh, he's not good at it. Yeah. I said, so here's my satire. Everything collapses. They keep the lockdowns going. We're, we're, cannibalism will kick in, and I'm going to eat my liberal neighbors. Yeah. I'm going to think about hauling up with a chain. Well, they just cut off me saying this is a joke. Yes. And so Jones is at a total psychotic break. And it's so obvious you wouldn't eat your liberal neighbors. Too no. stringy. Now, exactly. it's a live show, Monday through Thursday. <laughs> oh, he's so proud of himself, too. Yeah. Not even a good line. <laughs> Not even a good line. And he's like, hey, hey see what I just did? It's only because wink. there was a light keeping uh, Nick DiPaolo or Jim Brewer from jumping <laughs> yeah, in. Yeah, probably. It All right. crushed during the early show, though. <laughs> so they're, they're talking about Tucker Carlson and uh, this, these leaks that are coming out about Tucker Carlson and things that he said about Fox and stuff like that. And uh, it's funny that Alex, whenever Alex talks about knowing another celebrity, and he does it a lot, he always says... Oh, yeah, yeah, I talked to him. He told me I was right about everything. Like, that's like Alex. Every conversation he has with someone is just like, hey, Alex, this is Carl. I, I just found out you're right about everything. Like, is that what everyone's telling him all the time? It's, it seems like it. Makes me want to party with Tucker Carlson. I tell you, yeah. Super cool. I love yeah. it. I only met him in the green room at Fox back then. Bef- no, he used to be real host. stuffy. And but uh, about 11, 12 years ago, he called and said, hey, I'm sorry. You're, you're really right about stuff. I thought you were full of crap. But uh, I mean, I think you're actually pretty smart. And then he wanted to come to Austin 10 years ago. We, and we come pretty good friends. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> if we could get Alex Jones and Donald Trump to disagree politically and both run for president, that would be an amazing debate. Ooh. I would. I don't know who would ever get a word in, but that would be fun to watch. <laughs> they would just both be speaking at the same time. Yeah, I, I would watch that. I'd moderate that, for Christ's oh, sake. Yeah. <laughs> just just uh, throw it in drops in between. <laughs> no one told me there was going to be posting. <laughs> I don't think it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> right, I, I would join the mug club for that debate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that would be worth it. <laughs> Fucking mug club. Um, all right. <laughs> Mike, what else? Um, well, clip number one is kind of proof that even with Nick DiPaolo in studio, he... I. Unless I'm missing something, I think he's still Mrs. Dave here. It was a slight slip up. <laughs> when it comes with a little eight ball that says not today. Look, look, here's the thing. I have worked with, you know, the special needs people for, for years. Yeah, like me too. They I never were dating. sitting there. Yeah, well, that's just called taking advantage. It's Sorry. called grooming, Dave. <laughs> uh, it's called grooming little ladies. Um, Whoops. <laughs> he fucked up, right? That was clearly. Yes. <laughs> That was clearly Someone a said fuck something up. funny on the show. Must have been Dave Landau. <laughs> yeah. oh, it was me. I said something funny. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Whoopsie. Um, and then clip number two, you kind of hear uh, DePaulo where like this might not end well with the the language stuff. If like you know the week three, DePaulo is already getting frustrated. But uh, the other thing this clip points out is so Landau in that Michael Malice interview said he was the third chair. And this guy, Gerald, I guess, is the yeah. two chair. Kind Gerald, of? Gerald like Morgan the, Jr. Yeah, right. <laughs> he is brutal. I mean, his tagging of the, if you think Steven's tags are bad, oof. No, Gerald's good at laughing at Steven. I think that's his main <laughs> skill <laughs> yeah, set. Should, there should be a Gerald light implemented. <laughs> it is time for you to go home. Nick, opinions on that broad? Uh, speaking of Frozen, she looks like, <laughs> she looks like Ted Williams' head. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, people be going. I live in Canada. Everything's frozen. Go ahead, yeah, freeze my true. bank account, you <laughs> ugly witch. See that? But I claim. No, up. say say it. Yeah, you, you don't even. Okay. With her, I was hoping you wouldn't. I don't know. If you look I, up, what, what do you think? Where do you think her picture is next to what in the dictionary? Nick? Oh, it begins with a C and it ends in a T. And it rhymes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rhymes hey. with cunt. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna say punt. I mean. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that tag at the end, like, and it was with the Tom Myers, like, yeah. am I right, people? <laughs> I thought it was gonna rhyme Jared? with punt. No, the, the the what he said was way funnier, idiots. Yeah. <laughs> no need Nick, to say I've some notes for you. <laughs> Who's Zumox guy? Tyler. I think Tyler brings more to that show yeah. than uh, Gerald brings. <laughs> Gerald, Gerald. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa! <laughs> I have to slow you down there, Christian. <laughs> That's outrageous. I'll die on that hill, Carl. <laughs> All right, I have an example of the uh, the fake laughter 
And you can see, okay. and they even like switch the camera angles around too to show the reaction as people are all laughing at these jokes. And you apologize to each other when it happens. But the, 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 because that's what they say about you. They say, he works hard for the money. Absolutely. But <laughs> look, the truth is, he had the time. It's just uncomfortable. But that's how he's earning his paycheck, that uh, Gerald Morgan guy. Yeah, there's it, it's and it seems so fake and forced. Again, I keep saying it, but like when you know that they know it's coming, like I don't know how you live with yourself if you're Gerald. That's embarrassing that well, that's been exposed. This can't be completely scripted, Mike. There has to be some things that are happening. I mean, if you're interviewing Alex Jones, it's not going to go exactly the same as dress rehearsal, right? I don't know. So again, maybe I'm watching it like biasedly now, but a lot of Stevens, like when Steven interjects, it seems like, oh, well, if this topic comes up, I'm going to say this because some of them, they, they don't have like the exact proper segues. It just seems like something he thought of before in case yeah. this subject comes up. You know, there's definitely pre-written jokes. That's for sure. Here's a bit that they do. Oh, this is hilarious, guys. So they have this field reporter, Thomas Finnegan, and he's going to head down to the border to report on what he's seeing. I, If you all right, you're going to watch this. Tell me you couldn't come up with 12 better punchlines for this bit. <laughs> We have to go to Thomas Finnegan, our on-the-ground correspondent at the border. All right, Mr. Finnegan, uh, if you can hear me, what are you seeing down there at the border, sir? Hi, Stephen. I'm almost there. Uh, give me a few seconds, and I'll be on the ground to give you the you're, scoop. What do you, you're, why are you so late? Why are you getting there now, Finnegan? I had to stop and... Uh, I mean, I had to make a... Uh... You had to take a dump, didn't you? This is not the first time. You had to take a dump, Finnegan? Yeah, if you want to put it that way. Okay, f I did put it that way. Fine. Take all the time in the world you need during this live show. That's enough. All right, that's enough. Let's... So the guy isn't where he's supposed to be yet because he was pooping. Right. Mm -hmm. And it seems very genuine. It seems like that just happens naturally in the middle of the show. There's multiple people working eight hours a day writing for this show? <laughs> This is the same reaction I have on SNL. I'm like, there's comedians in a room writing this down <laughs> and thinking that this is going to fly? What the fuck? Uh, okay, so I actually have a similar clip. My uh, clip number five, <clears throat> maybe it's better if uh, you can see. Maybe it's more of a visual gag. So okay. I think I just need you guys to explain it to me. All right, sounds good. But you know stuff. Yeah. I'm cutting you off. DeSantis was in uh, Asia, right? So he's in Japan right now, and he had some uh, um, interactions with the Japanese media on the intention to run for president. Okay. So, Tim, if you could run that uh, clip yeah. for us. That'd be good. Wait, 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 wait. What, what the hell was that? What happened? Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, new guy Carl is having a bit of issues uh, oh. cutting clips. Wait, uh, Pagan? Carl Pagan? Yeah. Yeah, oh, Carl no. Pagan uh, needs some work on his uh, editing. Look, you know, let me go check it out real quick. Right now? Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, Carl, uh, we just had a clip go out on air that was way too loud. So when you cut these things, you got to make sure it's at the right level, normalize it so that we don't blow people's eardrums out. Sorry, Tim, won't happen again. All right, don't let it happen again. Wow. Hopefully that doesn't happen again. Yeah, let's let's yeah. make sure. But uh, anyway, yeah, right. look here, here. Yeah, yeah. somewhere. Sorry. It's you know, yeah. Where did so, you look, find him? Get, indeed, we found the clip though, right? We got the we have the right one. clip. So this is him talking about his. Oh my God, Nick DiPaolo yeah. has to be crawling out of his skin. Mike, during... let me break it down for you. Nothing happened. <laughs> this is so forced. <laughs> okay. This this Thank bit. You, Chris, I thought surely I was missing something. This, yeah, no, no, no. No. This stopped all I, the I'm momentum of the show. I was the one who couldn't see that. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> you're the lucky one, Mike. What the fuck was that? I don't I don't even get it. No, there's nothing to get yeah. there. I guess they have a disgruntled new guy who wants to murder his coworkers, but that's actually Steven Crowder. <laughs> I guess that's what the the joke is. Holy shit! But it's like it, it like stops all the momentum. They're doing a talk show. They're having a conversation. And then they have to like stop it to do this predetermined bit that they're doing. That's right. weird. And they're they're not selling. The weird thing is like they're not even trying to sell it. Like. This is organically happening. So no. they're not that douchey, but yet that makes it weirder in a way because it's not funny and it's also not like 
shocking or weird right. or mysterious. So I don't know what the point of it was. Bizarre. All right. But- I want to play uh, some quick clips here where I can tell that all the stuff happening behind the scenes in Crowder's life is getting to him. And so that's why I wanted to play all that stuff up front to just kind of introduce what's going on behind the scenes. Because he says some interesting things. Of course, he's talking to Alex Jones now, keep in mind. <laughs> Here's the thing right now. They want, they want to blame you by leaking his texts. And w- would anyone's life stand up to every single one of your texts and one of your phone calls and camera moments no. being revealed to the public? Not a single one of you and anyone who says no. so is lying. I bet some people would. I mean, Alex, <laughs> hypothetically, if your ring doorbell was recording you and your wife, I'm mean, yeah. just talking hypotheticals here. He's like, uh, all, all of us have uh, psychological torture over our loved ones, right? I mean, I'm not alone on that. Uh, what's the problem? <laughs> Who among us hasn't berated a pregnant woman? I, like, I don't know. <laughs> um, and then Unless this, you cast the first stone. Yeah, and then he, he does it again, like not long after that. Just understand what's happening. And look, I'm not like with you. And yet there were a lot of people who didn't give you any backup. And you and I weren't even very close friends. I felt compelled to do so. Look, no one's life stands up to this kind of scrutiny. I know that Tucker Carlson's in for a rough go, but this is just dirty well, pool. You can tell he's looking for support from Alex Jones. He's like, yeah, I mean, when your stuff came out, you know, I was cool with you. So, uh, didn't look like he was getting it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he is. <laughs> And then bitches be crazy, right, fellas? <laughs> <laughs> and then he, um, you can tell he's getting a little paranoid here when he says this. Hey, that's a clip, you sons of bitches back yeah. there. And I know he just talked about Christ and I said sons of bitches. Fuck you guys. I don't care, media matters. Have your moment. Shut up, Gerald. <laughs> so wow. he's already talking about like, oh shit, someone's going to clip this. They're going to play it on the show and make fun of me. Like that's not a good way to live your life or do your show. Knowing well, it's, that it's weird because he's, he's, Again, simultaneously, a couple different things where he's this uh, bastion of free speech and like, you know, he's on the the right, obviously. So he has to stand up for, you know, jokes and context and all that sort of stuff. But also says that he constantly defines the show as PG-13, which I can't fathom what 14 year olds he thinks are watching this program. The like, tweens will love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's one more clip because there's a lot of Jesus talk on this episode between uh, Alex and uh, Stephen, and so this is kind of a weird thing to try to pull off. If you're okay with a little bit of talk of uh, you know uh, Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, Alex Jones just did just hit me right in the feels. If you like like the show, if you like Jesus. Sign up for the Mug Club, everybody. <laughs> and by the way, if, if you love Jesus, uh, patreon.com slash who are these podcasts is where you show Jesus. And I want to know, does Jesus even like this show? Like, don't bring <laughs> don't bring Jesus into this. Jesus is like, this is like the, the 16th best conservative talk show out there. What are you talking about? And if you hate no. Jesus, go to blindmike.net. We're rebels, baby. <laughs> but but Jesus did think that the, the Newtown school massacre was a false flag operation. So that's the Jesus they're talking about. He's going to get us canceled, this one. <laughs> he said he's out he's with Dick this past week, and now he's getting all spicy on me. So I happens. already did a three-tenths of a tab of acid. So uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm just not in my right mind. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, all right, Mike, what else do you want to hit? Um, I know we've done this for a while, so I guess if you want to move on, we can end with uh, my clip number 11, because I watched every Crowder show for six days because of I was doing this podcast and wow. I was interested in what he would say after the div- divorce and all that stuff. So uh, I can't say I saw the entire episode every day, but I did see the beginning and every day they talk about this is a, an ongoing bit, I guess. Uh, Steven taking a sip of his coffee to start the show. Okay. Back by popular demand, the sip. It is. The sip. I need to change my headphones because the sip was too loud in my own ears. Uh, (laughs) And it's very hot. I was like, I got to do the sip again. And then, ah. He's a professional. Everything. everything, Was that Ferris Bueller? (laughs) Very nice start. Stole it from Pops. Uh, Another great contribution from Gerald. But every day they're like, fans want that. They put polls up to see if people wanted to sip. <laughs> I don't understand it. Well, it's also ripping off Opie. If I'm Opie, I'm very upset. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. <laughs> like he goes, I-, I had to change my headphones because it was too loud. Or just turn the volume down. You don't need a different <laughs> pair of headphones. 
Also, it's, you're doing it. Do it quiet. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. You have to be that close to the microphone when you're slurping well, He's your also coffee. stealing that move from Stuttering John. Remember, that yes. was the only time you'd ever see him on The Tonight Show was he would hey, take a big sip of the coffee mug, which I assume Jay charged him for. I doubt he handed him a free <laughs> Tonight Show with Jay Leno mug. Yes, that was his big thing is, is he'd go, he'd take the sip and then he'd be like, hey. And I remember Howard Stern did about an hour and a half on just that three seconds of video. <laughs> <laughs> what an idiot John is. And how bad he looks on, uh, on TV. So that was pretty funny. All right. Is that how you want to wrap it up, Mike? I mean, God, you watched six episodes of this? I, I feel bad. I know, but there's nothing else I really love okay. of the clips I have. Like, I'll say this about Steven Crowder is I think – he does kind of a hack morning zoo type show, but like he is a talented broadcaster. Yes. Like, and sometimes I did find myself like, Oh, that's an interesting point he's making, <laughs> but it's just weird to watch that show after watching the Landau malice interview. It puts a bad taste in your mouth for sure. And it'll be interesting to see the fallout of uh, future employees because there was something else. And maybe this was from the Dick show that I was listening to today when, uh, when you were on with him, Christian, but they were talking about how like a dozen other former employees all came out and talked about what a piece of shit Crowder is now how difficult he is to work for, which right. I mean, a lot of people have a problem with their bosses and stuff like that. So I'm not going to say that that's proof of anything, but mm -hmm. it does seem like he's not a fun, pleasant guy to be around. No, for sure. Yeah, there's there's a guy who used to be on the show that uh, he would call Gay Jared, who eventually Jared insisted he call him not Gay Jared. And I'd love to hear from Jared, but I bet that uh, he probably had some kind of NDA because uh, yeah. that was someone who left and was not happy about leaving. And yes. was not happy about the way things ended. So, yeah. A lot of NDAs going around. Who are these podcasts? W-H-O-O.